Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Dear respected viewers, I hope you are well inshallah uh, I'm Aruf and welcome to Stories from Al-Kahf uh, Today we'll be discussing the story of the seven sleepers inshallah ta'ala And with me uh, we have Shaykh Sajid Omar Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh How are you? Ma'aruf, how are you? Alhamdulillah Barakatuh Fiq, so nice to see you yeah, again You too, you too, it's always a pleasure Alhamdulillah uh, so, Sheikh, uh, tell us how was your journey, uh, a little bit about yourself, inshallah ta'ala. Allahumma lakal hamd, the journey was uh, well, mm -hmm. and all praises belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Ma. it's uh, nice to be back and uh, nice to be in your presence. Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. I heard that you come from Riyadh this time. Yes, Ma alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. Uh, you look a little different uh, in comparison to your videos. Uh, you know, can you let us know about what's uh, happened this time? or? Well, uh, you mean uh, I'm not wearing in the, 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 I'm sense, not wearing yeah. the, the scarf and no. uh, yeah, I have to keep up with you young lads, right? <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Sheikh. Alhamdulillah. Uh, like I previously mentioned uh, in the introduction of this uh, series, uh, this is the stories uh, that are within Surah Al-Kahf. Mm -hmm. So today we're discussing uh, the seven sleepers. Can you uh, just let us know about why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses stories to uh, express points uh, to his uh, Slaves, inshallah. Right, excellent. That's an excellent question, uh, Ma'aru. Firstly, we say Bismillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbi wa man wala. We always begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we send salutations upon the final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, it's a very good question you've asked. Why mm -hmm. um, do we have stories in the Quran? Mm -hmm. And um, there's several reasons um, for this. Um, firstly, people love to hear stories. Mm -hmm. Stories, you know, engage people, um, it keeps people interested mm -hmm. and um, also because uh, in stories are lessons, especially in the Quranic mm -hmm. stories, mm -hmm. uh, there are lessons for us to learn mm -hmm. and there's guidance in these stories, guidance mm -hmm. to assist us mm -hmm. um, in the time that we are living in. Mm -hmm. Now, um, one thing that's important to mention is that uh, the Quranic stories are not fictional stories, mm -hmm. the stories in Revelation are true stories, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's like we're getting a history lesson, but in the form of a story. Yeah. And um, when we understand this, uh, then, and in light of your question, we, 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 we realize that um, there's certain objectives that Quranic stories or stories in Revelation mm -hmm. um, want to achieve. Mm -hmm. And um, one of those um, important lessons is uh, guidance, as we've said, right? Because history is a great guide. Mm -hmm. History is a great guide. Um, those before us were people, mm -hmm. and we are people as well. They mm -hmm. went through circumstances. We go mm -hmm. through circumstances, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so there are lessons, and it is a universal law mm -hmm. that certain circumstances will uh, recur, mm -hmm. irrespective of time, uh, space, or span. It will recur. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be a recurrence that happens. Uh, after centuries, it could be a recurrence that happens after decades, it could be a recurrence that happens after days or mm -hmm. hours, but you know, they will recur. Mm -hmm. So people lived before us, they went through those circumstances. In the event that similar circumstances recur, what, how can we benefit mm -hmm. from uh, the experience of other people? Right? Mm -hmm. So this is one of the, 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 the uh, should we say, the objectives of Quranic stories, that that guidance is shared. Mm -hmm. And if we look in the Quran, we witness several surahs. Mm -hmm. or we can translate it as chapters, mm -hmm. several chapters that are actually named after historical events, mm -hmm. right? Um, today you've said we want to discuss the story of the seven sleepers, mm -hmm. right? If you look at um, the surah mm -hmm. that houses this story mm -hmm. um, and many other stories, it's actually titled the chapter of, of the cave. The cave. Mm -hmm or the chapter of the people of the cave. Because mm -hmm. if you look at the different narrations from mm -hmm. the Prophet ﷺ, so or the different narrations that we find uh, in the prophetic tradition, mm -hmm. we find two names. That mm -hmm. it is the story, uh, it's the surah of the cave or the, or the surah of the people of the cave. Mm -hmm. right? And both these things highlight, number one, uh, or both these names highlight, uh, number one, the importance of a cave, which perhaps mm -hmm. we'll discuss. Mm -hmm. uh, and number two, the importance of these people mm -hmm. of the cave. Mm -hmm. right? So it's named after, uh, because they definitely went through an experience and that experience has been registered in history. Mm -hmm. And now an entire surah has been named after this historical event, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, this is highlighting that from the objectives of the Quranic stories, 
mm. is to take heed that we should benefit from history and read history and ponder over history and deliberate over history. This is one of the mm -hmm. uh, uh, the objectives. Also, from the objectives um, is to um, give us steadfastness no. and inspiration. Yes, right, because it could be that we're going through a difficulty, mm -hmm. right, and now we're reading about other people who went through a difficulty. And you know what? They got through that difficulty. Mm. You know, sometimes when we are in a situation, we end up, you know, because we don't know where the end's going to be. And when you don't know where the end's going to be, you're just filled with a lot of unknowns. Mm -hmm. And when you're filled with a lot of unknowns, what happens? You just, you, you hyperventilate, you're worried, mm. you're concerned, you don't know what's the next move. Mm. But then you read the story and say, hold on, you know, they went through it and the end came to them. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And when we look at the different historical events, we see that this world, you know, is dynamic, it's not static. Things just you know, things don't just remain the same all the time. Mm -hmm. There's ups, there's downs, there's days that are with you, days that are for you, days that are against you, and so on and so forth, right? So, you know what, we're just going to ride the wave. There is a turning point that's going to happen because mm -hmm. every story we've read in life, we've mm -hmm. come to know that turning point's happened. Mm -hmm. So this um, is perhaps um, a brief mm -hmm. uh, synopsis uh, in answer to your question. No, Jazakallah khair. Uh, so, in terms of actually talking about a brief uh, analysis of the actual story we're, we're going to venture into, could you just, you know, touch on that a little bit, inshallah? So, what is the story of the Seven Sleepers and what does it entail? Yeah, so the story of the Seven Sleepers um, mm -hmm. is a story of a group of people mm -hmm. um, a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, they, you know, commentators have differed. Did these people come before Jesus mm -hmm. or did they come after Jesus? Mm -hmm. uh, clearly, we know from our sources that uh, this was a story known to mm. the Jewish settlers mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. uh, in the Arabian Peninsula. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll come to that as to why I'm, I'm sharing this conclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were a group of seven people. Mm -hmm. And they were a group that God Almighty, uh, you know, guided. Mm -hmm. And they lived amidst a people that um, practiced deviation. Mm -hmm. They practiced uh, polytheism. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, these seven took a stance. Mm -hmm. Right. So they lived at a time. If I could just share some of what some of the commentators have said, although mm -hmm. when we look at the story in the Quran, mm -hmm. we don't find all these details. Mm -hmm. And this, I want to use this as an opportunity to highlight an important point. No. And that point is in the Quran, uh, when God Almighty reveals a story, and this is what makes it different to just any story. Mm -hmm. God Almighty focuses and mentions those points that have clear lessons to develop us. Mm -hmm. There's no need for all the extra unnecessary information because time shouldn't be wasted. Mm -hmm. This is the beautiful thing of the Quranic mm -hmm. stories. Mm -hmm. So we don't have this extra information, but just to add context in yes. light of what some commentators have said, mm -hmm. they said that, look, this, these group of people lived at a time when there was an oppressive king, an oppressive king. Mm -hmm. He was deviated. Um, he wasn't upon monotheism. And um, he demanded that uh, people uh, worship him. Mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that they listen to his instructions mm -hmm. and they listen, they follow his way. And his way was a way of polytheism, mm -hmm. right? So these seven took a stance and they said, no, we will not do this, right? And because of that, um, they were threatened. And due to them being threatened, mm -hmm. they decided to detach themselves from the people mm -hmm. and leave the people that were upon deviation. And they sought assistance from God Almighty. Mm -hmm. And they went into a cave, mm -hmm. into a kahf. Mm -hmm. Right, because uh, this is what kahf means. It means a cave. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, when they went into this cave, um, God Almighty showered upon them protection in several forms. Perhaps mm -hmm. we'll traverse through them as we we go through the different verses mm -hmm. uh, that that highlight the, the 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 people of the cave. God mm -hmm. Almighty showered upon them protection in different ways and caused them to experience a deep slumber mm -hmm. for um, over three hundred years. Right or three hundred years, mm -hmm. um, yeah, but in the lunar calendar, in the solar calendar, in the lunar calendar, that will equate to three hundred and nine years. Mm -hmm. So they experienced this slumber for three hundred and nine years, and then God Almighty caused them to wake mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. And um, their story was a famous story; it was recorded in history, and uh, God Almighty mentions it to us uh, mm -hmm. in this revelation. Mm -hmm. But one thing we should highlight whilst we discuss this is why has it. Or, or is there a reason why God Almighty revealed it? Mm -hmm. And there is a reason. Mm -hmm. And um, the commentators state that the reason behind this is because um, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, Prophet no, Muhammad, he uh, went with the message of monotheism, mm -hmm. worshipping one God Almighty no. to his people. Yes. And his people turned against him. Mm 
okay. right? And as time progressed, his people began to feel that, you know what, he is really becoming a problem here. That maybe at the beginning, they heard of his message, they didn't like it, but they left him to be. Mm -hmm. But now, they're actually seeing that, you know what, he's getting momentum with this message. Mm -hmm. People are actually jumping on board and moving into the movement and believing in the movement. So they said, you know what, we need to take uh, extra measures. And from the extra measures, they decided that they uh, will go to the Jewish settlers in the, in the region and say to them that, look, he's come to us saying he's a prophet. And we know you guys have a history of prophets mm -hmm. and a history of dealing with those prophets, right? So give us some tips. What can we do to discredit him um, and sort the situation out before it becomes more emphasized? Mm -hmm. How can we exacerbate the situation? Or meaning, how can we derail his efforts um, and stop it from being emphasized? Mm -hmm. And the Jewish settlers gave these people some advice. They said, you know what? Go to him and ask him the following. Ask him to tell you about the story of the seven sleepers. Mm, and cool. ask him to tell you about a king known as Dhul Qarnay. Mm -hmm. And ask him to tell you about the soul. Ask him these three questions. The soul. And via these three questions, you will discredit him. Meaning if he's able to answer, but obviously they doubted his ability. Mm. So via these three questions, you will discredit, you, you, you will, uh, discredit him. And they went to the messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, and they asked the question. Mm -hmm. And the messenger, peace and blessings be upon him, said that I will give you the answer to these questions tomorrow. But he forgot to say, inshallah, which means if God wills. Oh, and as a result, the answer was not revealed to him for a period of uh, 50 nights or more. Right? So mm -hmm. um, there's more to share on this, but mm -hmm. let's take a, a quick break. And when we come back... Um, this is a good cliffhanger to leave yeah. everyone on. When we come back, yeah. we'll complete the story. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, uh, dear respected viewers. Uh, now, Sheikh, uh, before the break, uh, we were discussing a brief overview of the story of the seven sleepers. Could you just uh, elaborate on that for us, inshallah? Yeah, so just before the break, we were uh, looking um, as to why God mm -hmm. Almighty revealed this particular story mm -hmm. uh, in the Quran. Mm -hmm. And um, we said that um, the Quraysh, the mm -hmm. people that mm -hmm. the Messenger Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, went oh, to, they obviously uh, wanted to derail his message and derail. Uh, this movement that was beginning to happen, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, they took advice from the Jewish settlers mm -hmm. and the Jewish settlers, they, uh, they asked him mm -hmm. uh, or they asked the Quraysh that go to him and ask him three questions. Ask him about the seven sleepers, mm -hmm. which is this particular story. Yes. Ask him about the just king, Dhul Qarnayn, mm -hmm. um, and ask him about the soul. Mm -hmm. So the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, when, he, when they asked him, uh, he says, I'll give you the answer tomorrow. But he didn't mm. say, Insha'Allah. So mm. God Almighty didn't give him the answer until after 15 nights. Mm -hmm. And in that period, the Prophet wasallam obviously became sad mm -hmm. and it weighed down heavy upon him. Mm -hmm. um, and thus, if you look at this particular surah, you actually find revelation in it, mm -hmm. um, highlighting these aspects. For in it, God Almighty uh, says, do not say, uh, and do not say that you will do something tomorrow uh, this is instruction from God Almighty. Mm. And don't say ever <laughs> that you're going to do something tomorrow yeah. except by stating that you will do it tomorrow by the will of Allah. So that highlights what we see in this reason of revelation. Mm -hmm. In another ayah in the same Surah Al-Kahf, mm -hmm. the chapter of the, of, of the cave, mm -hmm. um, God Almighty says, فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعٌ نَفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ uh, God Almighty says that, you know, are you going to become destroyed beca out of, because of this excess of sadness that you're experiencing? Mm -hmm. Because of, uh, you know, the lack of belief and, and, and mm -hmm. um, you know, you experiencing constantly this group of people who don't want to listen to your message. God Almighty mm -hmm. is saying, don't let it destroy you. Mm -hmm. So this is highlighting the sadness that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, salam, felt salam. when the revelation didn't come down with the answer. And just as a side point, something for mm -hmm. all of us to benefit from, when we understand this, we really understand that this final testament, mm -hmm. this Qur'an, is not from Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. It was revealed to him. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, they just throw out statements and say, no, these stories are from him, uh, this revelation is from him. No, 
he was unlettered sallallahu mm. alaihi wasallam Salam may the peace and blessings of allah be upon him mm. so the fact that you know revelation was delayed you know if you look at it abstractly mm. this actually proves him being a prophet subhanallah because if he wasn't a prophet he would just have said anything mm. so you know they wanted to 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 prove whether, uh, to, if he's a prophet or prove that he's not a prophet and in the delay that happened Mm-hmm. in him getting revelation to answer the questions there's proof that he's a prophet mm-hmm. and in him actually receiving the revelation to answer their questions there's proof that he's a prophet how amazing so, is that so god almighty is 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 all wise so this yeah. is the reason why we have this story in our sources mm-hmm. but just to highlight again mm-hmm. um as we said that these seven sleepers uh, they were a people that some commentators have said existed before jesus peace and blessings be upon him mm-hmm. and some said was after Jesus peace and blessings be upon him but mm-hmm. again to tie everything down from what we've said we said that quranic stories focused mm-hmm. on what's important no. so god almighty yes. didn't tell us which era they lived in was it before jesus was it after jesus because mm-hmm. that's not important what's important is what they did no but what we can derive from what they did so. what they did and what we can derive no doubt mm-hmm. because again it's a history lesson yes. for us to benefit today so we have mm-hmm. to derive no doubt mm-hmm. No, subhanallah subhanallah uh, could you just uh, let the uh, the viewers and us know uh, when this re- surah was revealed and, and where it was revealed also yeah so that's a good question because it does bring context so mm-hmm. um, it brings context and it makes us understand how appropriate the quran is you know so mm-hmm. it's a good question that you've asked uh, because this particular surah mm-hmm. was revealed before migration to medina okay so it's known as it's called makki Mackie. It was revealed before migration to Medina, and we have a, a report that goes back to Ibn Mas'ud radhiyallahu anhu, which is in a book of hadith known as Sahih al Bukhari. Mm-hmm. This book of hadith has gathered the most authentic prophetic tradition mm-hmm. or statements mm-hmm. that, go, that go back to the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon so him. Um, and Imam al Bukhari mentions the statement of Ibn Mas'ud in which he says that. Uh, Surah Al-Kahf was from the earlier revelations, meaning mm-hmm. it was revealed before migration to Medina. Subhanallah. Yeah. Subhanallah. Um, and this ties in. Mm-hmm. It, it, it ties in also to the initial story that we, we mentioned as to why it came down. Because the Quraysh, mm-hmm. the idolaters, mm-hmm. went to the Jewish mm-hmm. settlers in, in the peninsula. So it, 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 it really ties up in the sense that they must have gone to them before mm-hmm. he actually migrated to Medina. Mm-hmm. So it was revealed at that particular period uh, in time and mm-hmm. even the context of the story. It has lessons for the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him first. Mm-hmm. It's being revealed to him mm-hmm. so that he can first take inspiration. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. That you know what? They tested me. God Almighty revealed. So it gives him more confidence in his mission mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. take the message of monotheism to the people. Mm-hmm. And I'm not forsaken by God Almighty. Look, the, this revelation is coming every time I need it. Mm-hmm. Right? There's no room for me to doubt, right? Mm. So this was a gift from God Almighty to him. And it's a means of steadfastness for him. And also, it's a means of what, what we call in the Arabic language, tasliya. Tasliya means to ease the discomfort. Mm. Because the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was a prophet. Mm. He was a human being. He was a prophet, yes, and he was a human being. He was not mm. an angel. Yes. He was not some other creature of, or creation. So no doubt, human beings feel hurt. Mm-hmm. They have emotions, right? Uh, they go through the motions. So he too was going through the motions because he is coming with a message that, you know, is for your salvation. And here you're fighting it. Mm. And he loves you. He wants you to, to, he wants you to experience salvation, right? So he's feeling it. So God Almighty is revealing stories. To help him and don't forget him and the fellow believers that were with him were being persecuted right and at the initial advent of the message we would say that that was a period of weakness right hmm. well let's not say it was a period of weakness let's say it wasn't a period of strength mm-hmm. let's let's title it in, in a more positive way no. because you're not weak when you believe in one allah and you're on the right path and you have yes. the right belief yes. but it wasn't a period of strength in that they had to face the persecution Mm-hmm. So God Almighty is sharing with him a story from history of a people who were persecuted as well. Subhanallah. That look what we did for them. Mm-hmm. Right? So it will happen for you. Mm-hmm. But don't retract on the stance that you've taken. Mm-hmm. Like those people, those seven sleepers of the cave, they didn't retract. 
So that's basically um, some benefits we can take from that aspect in relation to this particular story. Subhanallah, subhanallah. That also stems into the next question I have for you, Shaykh, is, uh, you know, who named the surah, Surah Al-Kahf? Is it something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet or was it someone else that decided to name it Al-Kahf? Because, you know, as we know, there's a few other stories that are found within it. So why is it that Al-Kahf was the main, uh, you know, theme of this surah? Right, this is yeah. excellent, mashallah. So, so there's two things that you're asking here. Yes. So basically you're saying Surah Al-Kahf mm -hmm. is a whole surah, it's a whole chapter. Mm, yes. And in it, we have several stories mm -hmm. and we do, that is a fact. Um, why has the name of the surah been named after this particular story, yes. even though yes. there's other stories? So that's one aspect. Mm -hmm. And the other aspect is who named it. Mm -hmm. So in terms of who named it, then we, we have narrations mm -hmm. in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself Allah. is calling it the, the, the chapter of Al-Kahf, mm -hmm. right? So we have uh, narrations um, in Sahih Al-Bukhari, um, we just cited the, the, the narration of Ibn Mas'ud. Mm -hmm. Sahih al-Bukhari is a book of hadith that mm -hmm, gathers mm -hmm. the most authentic prophetic traditions. Yes. And there's other books that gather prophetic uh, traditions as well. There's another book known as Sahih Muslim. Yes. In this particular book, we have uh, the narration of, if my memory serves me right, uh, Abu Darda, mm -hmm. an, a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in which mm -hmm. he says uh, that uh, whoever uh, recites, uh, who, whoever memorizes the first 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf, he will be protected from the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. In another narration, in the same book of Hadith Sahih Muslim, whoever reads mm -hmm. the last 10 verses of Surah Al-Kahf, he will be protected from the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. um, in other narrations, like in the Mustad of Imam, Al -Ahmad, Imam Ahmad, uh, there's a narration which states, uh, whoever reads the first 10 ayat or verses of Surah Al-Kahf, mm -hmm. and the last 10, he will have a light from his feet till his head. And whoever reads the ins entire surah, once a week, meaning on the day of Jumu'ah, mm -hmm. then he will have a light uh, be between him and the heavens, or between the heavens and the earth. In, in other narrations, uh, in, uh, if my memory serves me right, in, in, the, uh, the narration, in a book of hadith known as uh, Mustadrak al-Hakim, uh, which is by Imam al-Hakim, mm -hmm. uh, rahimahullah, uh, he has a narration which states that uh, whoever um, uh, recites Surah Al-Kahf, mm -hmm. uh, he will have a light from him mm -hmm. or, or between this Friday and the next Friday. SubhanAllah. Right? Between this Friday and the next Friday. So when we look at these uh, narrations collectively mm -hmm. and we see these narrations of companions who are at attributing uh, this name to this mm -hmm. particular chapter, we, we can only understand that they got it from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was taught by Allah Subhanahu mm -hmm. Wa Ta'ala. So we say that um, this surah was named by, by God Almighty. The surah was named by God Almighty. And it's interesting that the first story right at the beginning is the story of the people of the cave. Mm. And it is named um, the chapter of the cave. And this is not taking away anything from the other stories, mm. but just in answer to your question. SubhanAllah. Mm. SubhanAllah. Jazakallah khair. Now, uh, like you said, it, it was it the first 10 and the last 10 ayat of Surah Al-Kahf that will protect you from the Antichrist. The Antichrist. The Antichrist. Uh, could you expand a bit on, on what the Antichrist is or, or you know, is it enough for you to memorize or is it enough for you to read uh, the, the last 10 or the you know, final, the right. beginning or the last 10? That's, uh, that's another good question. I, I suppose you're highlighting it because of the narrations. Mm -hmm. That uh, one narration says whoever memorizes the first 10, mm -hmm. the other one says whoever reads the last mm -hmm. 10. Well, what we need to understand is that in Islam, these, all these instructions, uh, they're relative to a reality. Mm -hmm. And the reality is Islam is not a religion of symbols. Mm -hmm. It's not a religion of symbols. It's a, it's a, it's a religion of reality mm -hmm. you know it's not a it's not a symbolical gesture that whoever memorizes you're done whoever mm -hmm. reads you're done and then you can do whatever you want no it's relative to a reality and that mm -hmm. reality is the reality of putting into practice mm -hmm. reality of learning reality of understanding and reality of putting into practice so when the prophetic narration comes to us and says whoever reads or whoever memorizes mm -hmm. then we've got to put that in context of the reality of the islamic message and that reality is we learn we understand and we implement. So the reality is to seek to get protection from the Antichrist, we must read, yes, these verses, mm -hmm. we must understand them, mm -hmm. and then practice the guidance from these 10. And whoever does that, they will receive that protection and God Almighty knows best. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah, what a beautiful point to end on, Shaykh. Jazakumullah khairan. And Jazakumullah khairan to all the viewers at home listening. Also, may Allah reward you all. And I wish to see you all next week. As you can see in today's episode, we covered so much just from the Surah Al-Kahf 
uh, and just from the beginning uh, story from Surah Al-Kahf, the story of the seven sleepers. Jazakumullah khair, Shaykh, for all of your you know, derived benefits. And I hope to see you all again soon, inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.